Today we have two brand new vehicles. This one here in the high velocity is my Rubicon Extreme Recon and the Willys to the left of me is my dad's Gobi Willys Extreme Recon. So two definitely very different vehicles with their very different purposes. We both recently picked these up and in today's video I wanted to talk about some of the pros and cons and what to expect out of both of these. Maybe why you might want to lean towards one or the other. This is going to be a fun one. Let's jump into it and take a closer look. First and foremost, we're going to talk about the exterior of the Rubicon versus the Willys. Now, there's a lot that you can and can't get on either of them. And I will say, if you're kind of particular on your colors and you want things to match a little bit more, the Rubicon's definitely going to be the trim that you want to look for. On the Willys that I have standed here behind me, they're all going to come standard with this gloss black grill. So there's no way for you to get the color match grill on here. With some people like me, it's kind of a buzzkill because I like the option to flip back and forth. Instead of having to get this here and not being able to get it color match, the Willys comes with that right away and there's no way for you to change that. The second thing for you to consider is that the only way for you to get paint match layers on the Extreme Recon is to go with that Rubicon trim. When you do the Willys, you can only choose black here and they are just molded in color. They're just black and there's no way for you to get these color matched. Definitely something to consider when you're looking at the exteriors of these vehicles. Biggest difference too, looking at the hood, the Willys do not come with a vented hood. They're a standard Sport, Sport S and Sahara hood on there. Not a huge killer, but just know that you can't get the vented hood on this one. Another thing I wanted to bring up in the grill that you'll notice that it's not on this one, but on mine, you can't get the front camera on the Willis. So you can get the front camera on the Rubicon, not on this trim. It has to do with the integration of kind of the computer works inside, but they won't let you do that. So with the lower trim, the lower price point entry into, if you don't want all that stuff, this is going to be perfect for you. However, if you want more of those exterior upgrades and some of the more fancy things, the Rubicon is going to be the way to go to add those on. But with that, it comes with a higher price point. Okay, guys, we're going to move on to my 2022 Rubicon. We'll talk about the differences on the exterior, but you can see right away on the hood, we do have that standard vented hood on the Rubicon. So that's going to come on every single one of those. That started back in the JK days when it was an option. And now they put them on every Rubicon since 2018 in the new body style JL. Up on the grill, like I mentioned before, we are able to add the front camera, which I did decide to put on there. It's like five or 600 bucks, but when you're factory ordering one of these, that price becomes a little bit more nominal when you're building a 50 or $60,000 Jeep. Plus it is really, really nice for even parking in tight spots or going out in the trail, which I haven't tried yet on this, but I will here in the next few weeks. I did go with the LED group on mine. Same thing as that Willys come standard, the Rubicon, you actually have to option the LEDs on the front. So LED headlights, LED fender lights, and then the LED fog lights up front. Cool thing on the Rubicons too, to make them off-road capable, you can option them with the front and rear steel bumpers. That's something you can't do on the Willys, you can do on this. Obviously I've got plastic. Now looking at this, you're like, why did you order plastic? I ordered this because I'm gonna rip them off anyways. So I'm putting aftermarkets on here. So one thing I always do on my Rubicons is I color match the fenders. So I do color match fenders and the black top, and that is an option you can do on these. You can't do that on the Willys. And as you can see, it does give it a very nice two-tone color with the lower section of this split portion being black. The upper half is color matched. I really, really like that on mine. And I got to say, that's probably one of the biggest downfalls why I wouldn't go with the Willys just because I like the color match fenders on there. Now on the interior of my dad's Jeep, he did get this pretty loaded up besides the 8.4 radio. He did opt just for that standard seven inch Uconnect four. But with this, you still can get the heated seats, the heated steering wheel, cold weather group, as well as some of the safety and advanced safety groups on here too. On the center system, we do have the standard black and white info entertainment in the middle here in the cluster. You can also get the digital and the full color screen one. You just have to get the upgraded groups to get that. So with the Willys, a lot of the things that come standard on the Rubicon, you do have to option. One of the big ones for folks that kind of kills it for this is that you can only get the cloth seats factory. So you can get either the black or the black and tan like my dad got, but you cannot get leather as a factory option. They might've changed that a little bit for a brief second when you could add the perforator or the stitched, but you can't get that standard stitched or the standard saddle that comes on the Rubicon as a factory option on these. If you're looking for leather, if you want that leather on there and want it done from the factory, the Willys is pretty much going to be out for you. Another big thing that's missing on this one is going to be right here to the left of the auxiliary switches. That's going to be all your activation for your lockers. We'll get into that a little bit on the outside when we talk about the running gear on this vehicle. One of the cool things that I do like on this compared to mine though, is that they black out this interior trim on the steering wheel. Mine is chrome in, in inside my Rubicon and I got to say, I really don't like it. Maybe we have to yank it out and put either the black or color match that there. And another cool thing for me, I like the gray in this. I think the gray looks a lot more subtle. It blends a lot better with the Gobi than that bright red, and it looks just pretty clean. Maybe I'll have to change mine up a little bit too, but we'll see in a future video. Overall though, on the interior, you can get most of the same features, but there are some that just aren't possible with the Willis model. And I will tell you that one of the coolest things you can get on this, if you order the sun and sound package, you still can get the one touch as well as the Alpine on this one too. So if you want that, that's something you're looking for. You can option that in this vehicle. Now with the Rubicon, if you were looking for more interior luxury, that's where it's really going to come into play where that price difference is. Now on the interior of mine, I did opt for the cloth seats. You can do cloth 
you can do black leather or you can do a dark saddle leather but you have some more options with this it is a bit of an option upgrade when it comes to the cost wise for the leather but if you're looking for it and want it factory that's the way to get it done personally for me i like the way that the cloth looks so i went with that now as far as standard features on the rubicon that's where it really comes into play on all 22 model years and newer they came standard with that 8.4 uconnect 4 as well as the full led and digital cluster in the center with navigation and everything like that factory optioned it also comes with an alpine speaker system with an amplified subwoofer in the back which is extremely nice and it bumps pretty well an auto dimming rear mirror power mirrors on the exterior as well as heated mirrors come on this standard too so there's a lot of goodies that really come on this including proximity entry where you just put your hand behind the door handle and it does unlock for you so i can tell you that there is a lot on this vehicle that comes standard that doesn't come on the willies including this some love it some hate it red dash so the only way to get that off of there is to get the dark saddle seats like i mentioned before though see the chrome here around the center steering wheel i gotta say i do like the black betters biggest thing in here is what we're going to talk about in the running gear is your front rear lockers and your sway bar disconnect all those goodies down there we're going to talk about on the outside and some of the differences in the extreme recon as far as the willies package versus this rubicon now we compare both of these models the biggest thing that we look at is the running gear underneath now since they are both extreme recon models that means that they have a lot of the same features with the rubicon though you do get a little bit more when it comes to performance now i'll go into that a little bit deeper so if you look at the running gear underneath here when it comes to the axles the suspension the shocks and the overall lift height that is all going to be entirely the same the gearing inside is a 456 to 1 which means both of these are pretty much identical when it comes to underneath and the exact running gear and what changes them up is the ability that the rubicon has to lock the front and rear differential that red button on the inside that means you can lock both of those and really get all four wheels to have maximum traction the other big difference is the sway bar disconnect up front to help articulate and jam these tires up into that fender a little bit higher than this willies trim next to it but the biggest thing that a lot of people don't think about too which is one that i honestly just popped up in my head i obviously knew about it but it is the difference in transfer case ratio as well so in the willies you have a 2.72 to 1 transfer case and then in the rubicon you've got the 4 to 1 which is synonymous since 2003 that's the big boy in there and that really gets your crawl ratio a lot lower and helps you slow those wheels down and get the maximum torque to the ground but when looking these at these both underneath they're completely factory warrantied the same lift height same wheel size same tire size besides the lockers and some of that more extreme gear both of these are going to be running pretty much identical you got to think about how much you're trying to wheel both of them and think about it is that price point is the extra five six maybe even ten grand worth it to you the biggest thing to consider when you're debating between the willies or the rubicon extreme recon is that there are three different models when it comes to price point now you can build one of these willies sport trims out which doesn't have the leds with crank windows and manual locks and if you just do that model with the extreme recon you're looking at a base price of forty four thousand. now if you move it up to the willies wheeler like we have have here or just the standard willies this one has the leds the power locks power windows you're looking at about forty-eight thousand starting with just the vehicle and the extreme recon it does take a pretty decent hike of six thousand dollars up to a rubicon with just the extreme recon which is at about that fifty four thousand dollar price point so if you're talking about the willies base compared to that fully loaded rubicon you're talking 10 grand for some of those features that i went over today and that might be a little bit more drastic because you're going from power windows to manual windows and kind of going back a little bit when it comes to creature comforts or if you really want to upgrade to that rubicon 392 extreme recon you can pack out about 85 to 88 ish thousand dollars and you can pick up one of those so really when you're considering both of these think about how much wheeling you're going to do what creature comforts you want on the inside and the outside and then if that price point is worth it for you if you want to pay a couple more hundred dollars a month to have the rubicon fully loaded up the way you like I gotta tell you guys, this was definitely a fun video. We have two really cool Jeeps to the left and to the right of me. The nice thing is, is that these are both family owned. So my dad's is here and this one is mine. You guys are gonna be seeing a ton of both of these on the channel. We've got a lot of plans for both of them, how to upgrade them, how to modify them and see which one really is worth it for you. Maybe you like the Willys, maybe you like the Rubicon. I hope this video helped make that decision a little bit easier for you. And if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe and comment along to this video. We're a new channel and we love to see all you guys writing down below. I definitely leave all sorts of responses to comment comments. Heck, a lot of our video ideas even come from your comments down below. Until next time, I'm Matt from Dirt Road Cred. Get out there and earn yours.